concluding session of this workshop in which we have on the panel uh, Sonida Singh, a friend from men, Dr. Anita Gupta, the senior scientist from Department of Science and Technology, Professor Amarnath, whom I have requested to chair the panel, to moderate the panel discussions, uh, Mr. Praveen Gandhi, our friend and mentor and a director on the Board of Sign, and of course, I myself. So, since you have already heard the three of the panelists earlier in the day, I would like to request Praveen Bhai to share some of his thoughts, particularly on angel funding and VC funding, as seen from the funder's perspective, what they look for amongst the entrepreneurs who come to them for funding, and more importantly, what kind of support they expect the incubators to give such people in the matters of funding, networking, etc. So, Praveen Bhai, could you just uh, uh, share your thoughts for five minutes? Yeah. <clears throat> just as a matter of background, I've been involved in uh, funding early stage companies since year 2000. And personally, I've been an entrepreneur uh, the life before that, uh, which are many years. Um, and currently also, uh, we are running a fund, which is, again, meant for early stage. So I have uh, one great uh, amount of interest in this space and a great amount of empathy for this space. What is, and pardon my, I am not, if at all I sound critical, please uh, don't take it personally. But you know, I just sometimes like to call spade a spade and you know, show my frustrations. Um, so one of the biggest learnings that we have had since we uh, started this fund is that the quality of entrepreneurs that we create are just not uh, up to speed. A uh, lot of the stuff that should have been done prior to them becoming somewhat of a uh, uh, full and running entrepreneurs, we end up doing to the extent of even uh, you know, what it means about shareholding in a company, registration of a company, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that is very frustrating. But besides that, those things can be resolved. But fundamentally, I believe that I think that our, uh, historically, uh, our thinking in our families really uh, does not provide of an independent thinking of commerce because there are joint families and people tend to depend on the elders to decide what is to be bought and what is to be so unlike america you f get that education of what is revenue what is expense very early in your life so one lesson that i believe that we all can learn is that some of our incubation program must address that issue that largely the entrepreneurs that we do create here, I mean, not uh, in the IIT, but we do have a lot of entrepreneurs, but that are generally with a trading mindset. That be, can I take one piece from here and put it here and earn some commission. Now, in that scenario, it does not require, it is a very opportunistic business. So in that, you don't think about creating an enterprise. That is that I have to worry about uh, capital, I have to distinguish between revenue, cash flow, expense, how much money will I need, and so on and so forth. And it is surprising, and I am not an expert at what people learn in the, uh, in the Entrepreneur 101, wherever it is being taught, that these things are being taught in, in the manner that they should be taught. Uh, it is also people don't seem to understand. I mean, forget the quality of the weather. You know, I am not a big fan. You know, the VC pitch should be in this form and that form and so on and so forth. But the fundamentals must be clear. But people don't seem to know how much money it will take to run their business. And if they don't know, then they will not create enterprises understanding what kind of funding will it take 
to do that particular business they have in mind and if it if they say that oh i want to do this and but it's going to require if they knew that it requires 10 million dollars i wouldn't even go anywhere near it you know people should not waste time because if that's what they want to do they must size their business according to what is the capital that's available in the market uh, the other i think uh, thing i believe is perhaps lacking uh, is that uh, that the importance of teams building a team of entrepreneurs or a, when you start a company building a team as sponsors is extremely important you know we tend to be all lone rangers saying that oh i've got this great product and once i have designed it you know the you know there will be a queue in front of my uh, office for people to buy that doesn't work so it, to me uh, creating teams is very important at the startup stage and these must be complementary teams not one technologies and another technologies who will keep fighting as to whose technology is better and uh, the enterprise will never take off so i think a complementary team at the start with a commitment to live through that enterprise is very important because there will be good times and there will be bad times and if you say oh i am going to go hire a marketing manager from hindustan lever and all that is all pipe dream because where are the people there is nobody out there who will join unless you demonstrate a successful enterprise so till that time you're going to have to rough it out and so that's why the team is very important counter for that is and i think that's another thing that uh, incubators should worry about is to provide counseling continuous counseling to the teams because we are all human beings i have been in partnerships all my life and i have seen ups and downs and unless if the two partners or the three partners are very uh, very um, uh, opinionated and कि भाई मैं जो बोलूँ वही सच्चा है देन दैट पार्टनरशिप इज गोन ब्रेक ओके इट इज ह्यूमन नेचर दैट वेन देर इज सक्सेस सम पार्टनर्स विल टेक क्रेडिट एंड वेन देर इज फेलियर इट इज ऑब्वियसली समबडी एल्स इज फॉल्ट सो कंटिन्यूअस काउंसलिंग थ्रू दिस इनक्यूबेशन फेज एज टू वाई इट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर देम टू स्टे टूगेदर which is you know because this is like a marriage because you would like to believe that this is a long term association and you are going to have to do give and take and that i think is a, another very important uh, uh thing that we should all uh, inculcate in these teams that are uh, uh, the other big issue uh that i be, you know is with our, with us as indians is that we don't like to fail or we don't like to admit that we fail and i think that that is another uh mindset change that must happen at the academic level as that it is okay to fail that you will learn something from failure and you will go on to do something else or you will make your decision based on some different data than you did the last time so you know it is it is important for people to learn uh, and it is okay to fail so but if i say that i am going to grade you on the success of your entrepreneurship if there were some grading in the in the in that school uh, then perhaps you know it will just reinforce the motivation to say uh, okay, oh if i fail i get two marks but if i succeed i get 10 marks i think it is one must grade them based on the process they went through uh, i mean sabir bhatia had one hot mail after that he has consistently failed it doesn't make him good bad or otherwise it, that's the way it is uh, one more uh, pardon me to say this because you know we find these as with the entrepreneurs so that's why i am just sharing is that there must be specialized training schedules or training uh, modules in the entrepreneurship course uh, be 
because like for example web designing search engine marketing what all especially if you are doing an internet uh, kind of a business and that is more than likely you will do and not go and build a hotel uh, it is surprising to find how weak most of the entrepreneurs are in this areas uh, uh, so you know whether it's about product marketing uh, uh, technology marketing internet marketing people must uh, uh, you know these things need to be taught um last one other micro issue macro issue to my mind is that the uh, the uh, the collaboration with the industry whether it is enterprises whether they are angel investors whether they are vcs must be lot more proactive from the institute side rather than the vc side i mean or it may be equal because you know you should we should not sit and believe that Uh, vcs need us so they will come running to us no i think that we need them as much as uh, they need us so it must be very important that you know there is a very active collaboration and some of the things i thought of uh, is that if you have continuous programs of updates on what's what's the right program i mean projects to be involved in and so on and so forth so that it helps the entrepreneur align their enterprise with what the industry needs not what he thinks they should need industry should need you know because more often than not all entrepreneurs not applicable to uh, people in the incubation is that they design a product without insufficient uh, market validation because and they and the the product may even be good but we don't go and ask whether it is right for this time it may be ahead of its time or there are no customers for it etc etc so market validation and a very uh, uh deep validation to the extent that you know i have now sold uh, something or the other for past uh, 40 years and one thing i know that an indian customer never says no as long as he doesn't have to buy it at that time so if you go and ask somebody what do you think of the idea he say yeah 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 very good very good when come back to me when it's ready uh, so they never say no while in us you will find people up front telling you i don't think this will work friend okay so that so you have to also learn to separate the wheat from the chaff is this real or you know you know used to be i remember when i was involved with inditron and we used to uh, sell digital uh, computers we used to always get barraged by our counterparts in the us saying how come you are not selling as much as you should we get hundreds of inquiries for literature every month so i used to tell them that please come and talk to these people who are asking for literature because they are putting it in the library they have no budget to buy it. so you know so i mean we have this appetite for learning and second is that we we are not really very you know honest in our communication saying this doesn't work so it doesn't work okay um the other thing is that i think incubators have to decide uh, what are in this what are in the business for are they in the business as a as a social goal or is it to create entrepreneurs and in a, to that extent it is a commercial enterprise uh, because we have found for example in many of the incubators that we have visited and talked to entrepreneurs that there are phd students professors please excuse me if i uh, offend anybody uh, that perhaps they have good products you know something around indian languages and all that and we get excited and then we never hear from them again why because and then i was asking the incubator head he says what to do you know they are very happy in that cocoon of theirs they don't want to necessarily face the reality of the market 
Now, you know, now at that point, perhaps there should be a program to say, okay, is there a way I can take that IP and sell it to somebody else or create a team around that? So there must be, instead of that idea sitting in some IIT Delhi lab, it can be productive somewhere else. So this, you know, and, and I think the, if the incubators evaluate themselves as to what need are they meeting, you know, and if you have some PhD student sitting there for four years, I, mean, I think that you have perhaps denied some other potential entrepreneur space in that uh, facility. So there must be constant evaluation on some agreed criteria as to what it should be and how the, uh, 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 the churn within the, uh, within the incubator should take place because the rate success ratio is very small. So unless you can churn and create a velocity you know, you will be stuck with, you know, very poor percentage of uh, successful entrepreneurs. But so, but that has to be our if criteria for the incubator that yes, we created five entrepreneurs out of 50, which got funding. Forget the success. It doesn't, what is success is that they got funding, that it was the idea and the team was good enough to get funding. Uh, so I think that that uh, discipline is important. I mean, I know that, you know, when a professor comes to sit there and do something, there's nobody who can say no. But again, I think that that should be determined by some set of criteria so that, you know, it's not somebody's personal, uh, personal baby to decide you should go out and not go out. Uh, Lastly, I mean, two, two more points. I think one of the bigger is biggest issues in this country, I think, in terms of that why we have not been able to successfully create products. You know, where we call ourselves superpower or whatever power we call, we don't create products here. And why do we not create? It's not that people in Infosys or people anywhere else in IIT are dumb to create products, but who will buy their products? The, there is no market here. And if I have to fund somebody to sell in the US, that won't work either. So there needs to be some again, and perhaps IIT or incubators, and there may be some collaborative thing that you can do is to open doors for these companies so that some beta testing, or there are customers who will do beta tests. Because once a beta test is done, somebody understands it's a good product, somebody will buy. But, you know, I have been asking NASCOM to say that, okay, ask uh, 20 of your top companies to create a cell. That will only do this, that, you know, look at software products from somebody, you know, and either use it internally on a trial basis, <coughs> give it. Uh, but, you know, again, under their innovation uh, scheme. But you know, it doesn't seem to have happened because everybody is very busy uh, doing what they're doing. But I think that that is another uh, thing that we have to somehow influence the system to do that create a mindset of early adaption. I mean, why do, why does Cisco, uh, Nortel, all these people get, you know, new ideas? They are all not done inside. It's because they go out and try new ideas. Out of that, you know, maybe they will buy a few and that will fail and some will succeed. But they ha you have to go do that, provided there is a marketplace here because you can't. There is no way you can say, I will develop a product here and sell it in the U.S. market because you have no clue what the U.S. market is all about, okay? And no amount of money will solve that problem, okay? Uh, frequent mentoring and seminars on industry segment. And lastly, I think that again, and I think something that uh, we've been talking about in sign is to establish a network of angels and VCs. That I think the entrepreneurs will feel a lot more safe if they had some kind of a semi-guarantee or a virtual ability to believe that there is funding beyond this. Because, you know, in the end, that is the motivation. If you are going to do two years and then uh, to do what? 
it will go back and join some multinational. You know, the whole thing would have been wasted. So some some way that or the incubators or DST or whoever can create a fund which gets allocated, but must be uh, then given to companies that deserve that by a, an external uh, investment committee. But they, they must feel that there is some, you know, something beyond this uh, horizon that I will get. Then they will be lot more motivated to do what they are doing. Mm, uh, and again, from a policy point of view, one thing that Thai has been working on, without any success, uh, is to suggest to the government that. Uh, they must create some financial incentive for angels to invest. Uh, because we sort of view this as, because there is no angel money available today, very honestly. Uh, either people are very busy putting it in the stock market, but now maybe they will put it somewhere else. Uh, but uh, uh, so if you can sort of compare that investment in a in not large sum of 250 lakhs or rupees as what you allow for under DST scheme as R&D where you get 133 percent depreciation or something like that that will you know incentivize the angels to take some risks okay if not that I may at least get a write off here okay <clears throat> that way you will create a community of angels that uh, that can sustain because that, that ecosystem, as it is, very little money is available where we operate today. I mean, where we are a $15 million fund, there is another fund of $10 million. I think that there is room for $500 million worth of early stage funding. But, you know, there is no money. Uh, Converse is also true that there are not enough plans. I mean, we must have seen a thousand plans. And we have funded seven companies. So whether it's a good ratio or bad ratio, I don't know. Uh, and some of them, and I will just make one last point. I think another thing that you must teach to people is about this business of valuation. Uh, that, you know, valuation is irrelevant at the point of uh, when you are starting. If you will perform well, you will get your value. If you build a valuable company, you will get a valuation. But to say I am worth 5 crores or I am worth 20 crores and all that is to me a meaningless uh, uh, discussion. So, uh, you know, with that at least uh, I can tell you what, what we think from... And there is, I think, ample opportunity. Uh, the reason we only invest in Mumbai and Bangalore is because we believe that we have to be near our companies. So we don't invest in Delhi. So, you know, there must be seed funds which are in geography so that they can, because it is a lot of hand-holding, I can tell you that. There is, it's not phone calls and say, ha, aisa kar leo. Because there is nobody there who understands, aisa karo, maine kya karne ka hai. Okay, you have to make them, make the connection. So it's a, it's a lot more beyond just academically teaching people what is the business plan and what is uh, what the f uh, uh, form of a VC pitch should be. There is a lot of contextual work that uh, needs to be done. Thank you. A couple of very important points that he made. Uh, before I open the panel for questions, uh, would uh, any member like to add briefly on whatever uh, they're already uh, stated? Or and, disagree. Or disagree. Yeah. Yeah, please. I'll discuss, uh, Mr. Gandhi mentioned a lot of things that, that need to be taught. And so in that context, I absolutely agree with every single thing that you've said. Uh, you know, and I, I can also see why you're still receiving, you know, teams, plans, which don't meet up to your expectation. Because it's a fairly new, even teaching entrepreneurship is a fairly new thing that's happening here. You know, most of our 370 institutions are literally in year one of their 
you know, initiation into entrepreneurship education. Our challenge right now is to teach all of these things to the faculty members so that they get then translated uh, into programs on campuses. But uh, the one thing that we're seeing with some of our mature institutions, Mr. Gandhi, is that you know, the emphasis on these things is there. What does the team mean? You know, even if you're putting a business plan in the context of a course in classroom, you know, you're not really expected to have a real team around you, right? But the emphasis on team and what kind of a team it would take for that particular business to succeed, you know, that mental exercise is done, you know, so that there is the understanding that there are complementary skills that are required, that there would be different kinds of, you know, leadership dynamics within a certain team. All of that is being taught, you know, either through these theoretical or through even some simulation kind of exercises and other things. And also the emphasis on finance. And of course, you know, we at NEN uh, put a great deal of emphasis on bringing an industry into every single one of these interactions and learning uh, opportunities. So. Uh, to the DST, I think one very important point uh, Pravin Bhai made from a policy perspective is that there truly is no financial incentive for angel funding. You see, if you take the second round funding or third round funding or market funding, that funding comes at a time where there is a reasonable assurance already existing knowledge and valuation at that point in time is much more meaningful because if all parameters are known. And it is only proper that that falls under the existing policy framework of financing and so on. But angel funding is almost like a R&D investment. And that's a very good suggestion. So perhaps if you could take this as a take back from the thing as a suggestion, yeah. that angel funding up to a certain limit, say 50 lakhs per company or whatever, should be considered as an R&D investment. Although there would be, of course, shares and things like that, but the, the thing should be considered in terms of incentivizing the angel community. And I, I hope you heard him very loud and clear when he said that at that stage, when you go to the angels, valuation is meaningless. I gave you an example of how we conducted the valuation of our first company when Rakesh Mathur, Nandan and I did it. It was not done on the basis of any realistic estimate of how much will that product sell or something like that, but rather how much does the team require to sustain themselves to build up a company. And from that requirement, as I said, Rakesh Mathur said, look, I think if I'm doing, I mean, at that time the term used was not angel funding, it was just funding. Says, I think I should have a 20% stake because I've been mentoring them, I'll continue to mentor them. And they need about this much money Therefore, the valuation of this company in my mind is this much. Now, this might appear very arbitrary, but believe me, at the angel round of funding, there are no other parameters known. So, Pravin Bhai, of course, said it very explicitly, that valuation at that stage is crap. However, it is not totally crap, because when a funder like him sits to evaluate people at that time, he has this uncanny ability to judge individuals, ideas, and so on from a long-term perspective. That comes out of experience. I don't think even he can give you a logical algorithm of how he does it. But that is what comes out of experience. And that experience and that judgment is very valuable. So that is one point. The second point he made is about the need for angels to be near the action. Angel funders are not, you know, saukars who just give money and collect interest. They are actually part and parcel of the risk that is being taken. So when you think of building incubators in different places, in your own geography, as I said earlier, you must find the local successful entrepreneurs who will either form some kind of a small angel fund there itself or will in turn tie up with the countrywide funds such as his or whatever and we'll say that okay since you are in Delhi Pravin Bhai but I'm in Coimbatore or I'm in Jarsukuda now if we can set up an understanding if I know what exactly you want me to do I can be part of your activity and I can mentor these people on a day-to-day -day basis and we could have a weekly conference call with you. some such thing could be could be possible but this connection has to be built by the organization which runs the incubator because individual incubating companies will be incapable of doing this. And not only that, VCs and angels will not have any faith in any individual company. The faith will at most be 
at best be there on the organization which runs am i right so that is one uh, very good take of course marketing is too weak he has already mentioned and we shall be running a separate two day program on the marketing mantra so thank you very much pravin bhai let's open this uh, panel for questions now i, I am prasad from me sir i got one or two points where i would like to mention sir this is with reference to the time basically sir may I request you to i mean uh, work towards creating entrepreneurship chairs in different colleges or journals or uh, material related to the entrepreneurship people for example i mean we can see many of the cases which are being uh, circulated like i have seen nan or other sources for example uh, for hcl chairman speaking i have attended one of the programs last time at delhi if you can have a cd of that sort in the country probably it can be a wonderful mechanism through which entrepreneurship can be developed or educated i specifically request i that uh, it should work to encourage entrepreneurs to create chairs in different colleges different institutions in the country which are really falling short of journals also the same case the second point sir the academics and entrepreneurship are altogether different or separated like in, in the country which we have practiced i mean there is a need to integrate like but probably i mean something has to be done by the uh, highest level body where how these thing can be integrated there it can be integrated there is no conflict between academics and entrepreneurship it can start from school to pg level there is no need to be crying at the pg level saying that you should become an entrepreneur after 25 years we are working somebody asking somebody saying that you should become an entrepreneur we should ask somebody to become an entrepreneur even at 10th standard 5th standard 6th standard so that kind of integration has to be brought in in the curriculum and the the teaching style itself so that's one thing which we are doing at niti which i insist on i got a specific uh, this thing sir incubator cases for example if you would like to search for i don't think any incubator cases i get in the net or in indian cases like madam was saying there are 45 incubator cases in india for example i have seen uh, trivandrum or somewhere there is a good uh, uh, incubator icsa park got uh, incubator award but probably we need to have cases like no i mean otherwise how i can model myself saying that i should become one more sign I, i should become one more icsa pack i request the dst to promote the cases so that we'll get a handful of cases we will understand what are the models that are working for that this is one thing i got a specific I just like to add this thing we are shortly initiating a study and uh, like wide range of documentation on yeah. the incubators as well as the successful companies as well as the failures also that that one okay for example faculty development programs initiated by dst has got two weeks program 15 days program i understand i mean i i can't understand how a faculty can spare 15 days time for a, this thing today we got t20 program you know 20 overs cricket we are playing today and we got 15 days training program for entrepreneurship development i think actually after 15 days i think you will dissipate rather than really get inspired i submitted a program for two days program where dst i mean the edi says that you are not eligible to get a two days training program for faculty i really got surprised anyhow this is the fourth comments which i made it i request uh, the panel to address about all that thank you very much for this you know i uh, you said something about tai so let me answer that uh, see i mean tai has an active uh, uh, enp what we call entrepreneurship nurturing program what we do uh, find that students don't join okay although we have you know significantly reduced fees for students so perhaps you know you can work with tai to maybe the college can fund it or we can reduce the cost further to make sure because we also have an organization to run so it's not that we are you know uh, making profits out of this but and we can create a separate uh, mentoring uh, group that can work with your uh, you know the entrepreneurship and that's offer offer open to all chapters in all cities that we have entrepreneurs who know more little more than what these kids do so we'll be happy to uh, uh, work with uh, with this groups of people uh, i think they are best suited to give you circulation on where there is success or because we don't have access to all that data so but i'm saying i tai is more than happy to uh, 
to work with you on a longer term basis. But that again goes back to my earlier statement is that you need to identify the need and proactively reach out. I mean, we don't dream about this, I must go and offer this to NITI or IIT. You need us as much as we need you. So, uh, please. Uh, about, uh, I'll just comment on the need for the cases that you mentioned and the initiative which uh, DST is taking as uh, mentioned by Dr. Anita Gupta on the not only just cases but the entire Gamut of field. I'll tell you one problem which I have faced time and again on this documentation. Either there is very little documentation available or there is a plethora of documentation which has not been classified and summarized. So what happens today, technically I have access to each one of the 45 websites which will describe all the 45 things. Technically I have access to all the websites of NEN and everything that they do. So either it is too much information from which I cannot call out exactly that small portion of information which I need for a specific purpose, like setting up an incubator or doing marketing or attracting and accessing VC funding. Now, each one of these things have each one of these. Perhaps a time has come to exploit the flexibility of markup language on the internet and create three levels of documentation. One is completely a summary sheet of all the internet links that are available, but classified according to the needs. So it is perfectly all right if the same link appears twice. However, if the entire link opens to give me a 20-page document, whether I access it for marketing or whether I access it for uh, VC funding is not good enough. So each of these links should then be reorganized as multiple pages, one page for a particular theme. And I think the links should be organized on that summary page. So if I'm looking at VC funding, then any one of these 45 sites I visit, I don't get 20 page document from each, but I go only to those paragraphs or those sections which relate to VC funding. I would suggest that in, in the case you are collecting this documentation, we would be very glad to provide some kind of an organizational structure. Because this will probably be far more helpful in, in quickly uh, from relating to Poini has a question. Yeah, this is again to Dr. Gupta. Praveen Bhai mentioned about you know, fiscal incentive about the angel investment. Now, seven or eight years of experience at sign, we, we have also observed a very little participation from the industry, not only for you know taking the product as a market validation, but also you know, in terms of their participation and in investing in startup company, which has a large resources to, you know, actually invest in the company. So just like fiscal incentive, you know, for angel investor, perhaps some kind of fiscal incentive, you know, risk capital by per se at a very early stage can be treated on par, a par with R&D. And if I'm not mistaken, this was also, this both the proposals were part of the planning commissions, you know, report that you indicated yeah so i think something on that if you are taking the first comment with you then this is another comment they are the same actors same people I, exactly I, they are the same yeah, yeah. people who pre prepared right, that exactly okay. same, yeah point is that we have been shouting from the rooftop for last three years in that nobody is even blinking so you know, maybe <laughs> If, if it goes under DST as under, you know, because we don't understand how, you know, how to make no, something uh, work in. I, I think, you know, DST did a fairly good job to get some kind of fiscal incentive yeah, for incubators so and, yeah, yeah. We talked about the yeah. incubators and incubators happened by chance. Right. So, the, uh, by the way, Praveen, by incubators as well as incubating companies working within the incubator, do not know how to pay service tax for any yeah, small soap. That. Yes. Very small thing. Correct. No, no, Nalin, I have known for a long time. But Nalin is more involved in SME segment. Yes. Okay, and hence he is the old, old, uh, old industry. Uh, so, you know, for him, this uh, VAT and service tax and perhaps are more uh, important than, uh, you know, getting an angel funding. Mm. So, 
Uh, maybe we could, as a, as a consequence to this workshop, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Mukta Atre, could you note this point? What we should do is we should write a formal letter uh, consolidating all the points that have emerged and explicitly suggest to DST that in order to encourage angel funding, where essentially they are taking a huge R&D risk like any other R&D, perhaps the department might be kind enough to moot a proposal to treat investment up to a certain point as an R&D investment or expenditure rather than anything else. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, so that, that, I that's an excellent that, idea. You know, one of the comments somebody made in the yeah. government was ke bhai, it shouldn't be ke bhai, baap apne ladke ko paisa de, lakh rupiah, and take. Uh, <laughs> you know, so there is, I mean, we are very creative there also. No? Yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, the, this, is, this is very interesting and uh, this shows another mindset. And as he said, we are very creative, so in the country such things do happen. But unfortunately, if 2% of these things happen, 98% of the uh, normal people uh, fail. But because of this problem, the, see the government has to ensure that the larger good happens and that it, the, the provisions are not used by individuals for sort of self-sustainers. And that is the object. But if we apply these rules specifically to those situations where companies have been evaluated independently, admitted to an incubator, and then this angel funding is going, same conditions that you put, probably it would make sense. Okay. Any other questions? Gandhi, I was wondering if you had um, sort of a specific due diligence kind of checklist that you go through with companies that you're evaluating of, you know, very sort of precisely the kinds of things you're hoping they've taken care of by the time they come to you? Well. No, I mean, you know, very honestly, you know, at, at the level we are investing, there is nothing to do due diligence on because it's two people and a plan. So I don't know what I can do due diligence on. So we do, of course, do reference checks on, uh, on the uh, individuals who are uh, asking. If the company is a little more mature, we go through, but again, they are never in any significant revenue mode so that, you know, there is balance sheet or PNL has any meaning. So I would say maybe there is some 10% worth of due diligence in terms of uh, reference checks and all that. Otherwise, as Dr. Fatak said, that it is essentially a gut feel or in, in the interaction with the entrepreneur saying, okay, does he understand what he is or she is doing? And that's very important that it's not a, I, we cannot do any DCF calculation on some spreadsheet because nobody knows. So, and it is likely that the business plan will change within the first year. So, you know, all that is irrelevant. So you basically bet on the team and we are very big on team being the bigger criteria than the idea. Excellent point he made. Sorry, there's one more question. I'll comment on this later. I'm Manohar Pai from Manipal. Uh, my question is, when I have gone through this series of lectures, a lot of information I gather. Uh, today, Professor uh, Amarnath said there is a TEP uh, funding. If you look at uh, DST, there is a fund for setting up the incubator. If you look at the uh, fund, basic fund required for anything, if, uh, venture capitalists are there, angel funding is there. Everything is there. In spite of this, why things are not happening? Probably my understanding goes, it is not being percolated down to every nook and corner of the country. I think there is a lot of uh, such uh, initiatives are required. If I look at uh, DST and incubators where they are located, mostly for the sake of uh, some risk covers from DST are kind of organization, they are found in most of the government organizations. That is the first th point I would like to point out. And uh, <coughs> when you ask uh, some regions, if you look at uh, the entrepreneurship capabilities, they are quite strong in that. But when it comes to government support is concerned, I don't see anything. Whether it's the ignorance of the people or whether it's a government mechanism which has not uh, initiated 
this type of entrepreneurship uh, awareness in those regions is not very clear to me. I think you can comment on that. Uh, uh, please, please, please use the microphone. In fact, uh, South uh, private players are more, uh, very proactive. In fact, I must say. Yeah, VIT, Congo, yeah, and uh, as a the country, Spanari, Amman, yeah. they are all uh, proactive in getting our support. Yeah, but uh, as a country. So, uh, as far as DST is concerned, we need not make any distinctions between the private and the public. As long as the proposal is sound enough, yes. we are ready to support to uh, in, in fact, I, I will add to that in more than one respect. This is a perception coming from the old days that the departments will typically fund only the government institutions. That is no more correct, not only in this case, but any other correct. But the fundamental distinguishing and defining feature is the quality of proposal made and the commitment seen within the proposing institute to that way. If it is seen to be made, the proposal is seen to be made just to grab some money, which unfortunately is the case several times. And that is not necessarily only from private institutions, even from government institutions. The departments are now clever enough to figure that out and refuse such a support in either case. Am I right, uh, Dr. Yeah, yeah. Is that, yes. Yeah, that, is, that is most important because yeah, very, very important. there are few places, yes. even the committee members have made a comment that proposal is strong, but you are a private institute, we are not in a position to keep. No, that is, that is that, a, that I think that they, might, they might be stating so on the face of it, but that is not the correct statement. Only in, one comment which uh, I would like to make regarding private institutes, we would definitely seek more commitment and more contribution, the sort of a matching in most of the case, uh, cases, to just to uh, have their more commitment on the proposal. That is the only thing, because private institutions cannot uh, give that much of funding. So that is the only, and we purely go by the merit of the proposal. Let me also comment on the scale that you mentioned. What you say is not true, even if the information is available. Take the case of angel funding. You would have heard what Praveen Bhai said. They would have examined something like 1,000 proposals. They found only seven worthy of support. So please understand that the quality of proposals which are coming for funding are probably very atrociously listed. Where without any understanding of what a funder will look at, probably the sense of commitment that he sees. You know, he clearly stated, and that is exactly what we also learned earlier when Kamal used to mentor us as the startup incubator. You know, incubator itself was a startup. So he, he gave us a couple of hints, you know, always look into the <coughs> eyes of the people, try to judge the fire in their belly. At the initial stage, we are even before angel funding. We don't even know what will happen. But as we progress further, is there a commitment? Is there a commitment to sustain the good and bad times? Now that judgment, the incubators have to make. And such well judged people only should come. Just as quality of proposals from the pros proposers of incubator is not adequate many times, Similarly, proposals for funding from the incubating company is also atrocious. I don't know whether I shared with you or not, but as a part of the Thai activity many years ago, I had created an event where the startups were supposed to give their pitch in 90 seconds, one and a half minutes. And we had a lot of uh, uh, Thai uh, 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 charter members, supporters, sponsors, and VCs accumulated. And many startups asked me this question, now, how can we tell everything that we want to say of importance in 90 seconds flat? And I told him what Kamal had told me, which is, if you cannot convey your major pitch to me in 90 seconds and get me attracted, I will not be willing to spend nine minutes with you. And if in those nine minutes, if I give you, if you are not able to convince me, then I am not going to spend nine hours with you. So the pitch has to be made at different levels, and you have to convince people. And that's the reason why I, when I said, you know, levels of documentation, I think there has to be a, a two-minute pitch, a 20-minute pitch, and a 20-hour pitch. And the appropriate pitch must be made at appropriate time. This applies to proposals. This applies to evaluation. In fact, this applies to life in general, I would yes. think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, please, please. Uh, our experience also indicates that uh, 
most of the institute about 70 percent approach us for funding of TBI only to strengthen their equipment base. That is their sole interest. <laughs> okay. So, until unless they are conceptually clear about the incubation, what all goes into it, it's very difficult to get it uh, going and have it's success incubator program. So, I'll request Professor Fatak if this program can be actually organized twice in a year, we'll be ready to support. You target about 30, at least 30 institutions in one program. So, if you are able, if we devote time to educate institutions about the conceptual uh, framework of incubation and entrepreneurship, I think we will then be able to get very good proposals and the effectiveness of the incubation program will also be enhanced. Can I ask a question to you? Is there a, is there a periodic audit of, uh, on some criteria on what these incubators do? Because otherwise there is a real estate being wasted. So, I'm sure. uh, actually, the audit is not very formal, but like uh, we have a national level committee uh, which uh, reviews the performance on a set uh, criteria based on the number of enterprises promoted, the incubation process and systems are in place. That is the, but we need to have a deeper analysis of the... I think so. I mean, I think in terms of, you know, the incubative feedback, external industry feedback, because I think in the end you are doing this to service somebody yeah. external to the system, not not the internal uh, faculty or other people. So there must be some participation from the external world to, you know, in that audit process. Yeah, in fact, we are having uh, impact analysis of the whole program. But I would like to invite you, if you can contribute and uh, be a part of that uh, committee. Uh, I'm saying I'd be happy to be part of any committee, but in the end, I I have been in so many committees, <laughs> and especially, I mean, I was very passionate because we actually funded this Thai and Stanford program to, you know, we spent a lot of money to create that uh, whole set of uh, recommendation to the finance ministry for what needs to be done for the whole entrepreneurship space. We had you know, spoken to Montek. And well, but but Pravin Bhai, a few things have happened and more will happen. Give well, give give us some time. After all, no, we I am not I am so, not a very patient person. I, that's the so. problem. But if you look at India, you know the Indian philosophy. What is time? Yeah, it is yeah, infinite. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I, I would just like to mention a couple of points here, because this audit, what he says, is extremely important. See, as a control system engineer, we have some very fundamental sort of mindset what we talk about observability and controllability. If something cannot be observed, you cannot make measurements. If something cannot be measured, it cannot be controlled. And if something cannot be controlled, you cannot optimize. Now, if our ambition is to optimize the whole set of incubators, then the auditing in terms of measurement, in terms of understanding, and to be invoked formally would be a very good idea, I think, what he mentioned. I would just touch upon one point, which is completely different sort of parallel. The revenue model that you had mentioned about the incubator, and you had suggested that the following should be the revenues for day-to-day -day running and so on, and you had mentioned about the, uh, you know, uh, rental and such services, uh, I mean, money for such services from day one. I had shared this with the audience here, but I will repeat this. When I started the pilot incubator here, I had exactly the same model in mind. That model required the startup companies to invest some money to begin with from day one. At that time, such investment or angel or funding was not available. And we estimated about five to six lakh rupees per year company will have to spend. Uh, in those days, the heydays of uh, internet, we used to get large number of applications. Everybody wants to incubate. But one fellow said, my father wants to meet you. And the father came and he said, what if they will fail? This brings me to his question. We, the incubators must proactively work along with other entrepreneurship spreading agencies in your region to remove this stigma of failure in the society's mind. Very important. So this father said, what, what if this fellow fails? And I told him, look, these are IIT Bombay BTECs. They will always get a job. So what's your problem? And, but he says, suppose after one year, when my son has a loan of two lakh rupees on his head and he takes up a job, who will marry him? So the stigma of failure, so I, I actually called Kamal and Nandan and said, I have a marriage problem. 
And he did not understand when I told him that people are not willing to take the risk because of this failure. So if you want to make them pay in the first year under any guise, believe me, the experiment will not succeed. Then Nandan said, all right, part of my donation you divert for this and use this to give free services to people. That is when we conceived of a stockholding model, where we said we'll hold 3%, 5%, 6%. To this date, that continues. However, that does not give any cash flow to the incubator. The cash flow will come only when we discharge in the first round of funding, let's say one third of our holding and so on. And the amount may differ drastically. And the amount may not come in the first two or even three years of the incubator. So I would strongly suggest that your funding probably should have a strong relook at the assumptions made on the viability of the incubators and should ensure that no matter what, for the first three years, the running expenditure for the incubator, including the people, services, etc., etc., is provided for through the funding. So should be fully, met. fully met for the first three years. Of course, during the first three years, they are expected to start generating through the discharge of this thing, and they will accumulate those funds so that they can be self-sustained. In general, the world over, very few incubators are self-sustained. All of them depend on some kind of support or, or something. Most of it comes from the government. But my worry is that if we don't take care of this, then every incubator that you fund, you may end up doing what I call subcritical investment. And all of those 50 will die in eventually. Whereas, even if you choose, say, 20 of those, and say, for three years, we under, underwrite your expenditure. Meanwhile, however, these are the parameters of judgment. So we are not asking you for money or something. But tell us how many relationships you have built with the VCs. Tell us how many local successful entrepreneurs have come and mentored your people. Tell us how, what you have done to educate the incoming companies, monitoring them. These are the parameters on which you will be judged. So annually, I will release your grant for next year, provided you have done all of them. Do, do you agree yes, with this? Very much. Yes. So give them a three-year support, and I think that will help a lot. I don't know whether the audience agrees with uh, this suggestion. Yes, I think it's a very important point, and I think as a matter, while we are teaching people about business models and all that, I may recommend that the incubators themselves must create a business model for its own uh, right. uh, which will tell you that, yeah, if I can only exit after three years, five years, this is the amount of money I will need. So do, how much, and to improve my success ratio, how many companies must come through the, uh, through the uh, incubation process so that I can make some money in that discharge of 3%, which can create a self-funding. So it has to be also looked at as a business, I mean, yes, government is there, it will fund, but I would like to believe that the incubators must proceed on the basis that they can become self-sufficient at a point in time. Whatever else you give them can go towards the... So, I mean, before we teach everybody about how to run, make business plans, I think we should make one ourselves. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, in fact, yeah, the models, uh, the sustainability model also is a function of the location of the incubator. That is true. We can't have the same set of performance parameters for incubator located in Bombay Reserve, is, which is located in Bagalkot in a... That's true. Uh, that's true. Even but the technology trust area. Correct. The also. point again being that some things are going to require 10 years. I mean, it's a business I fund. If I say that this, before it becomes a successful, it's going to need four years worth of it, uh, funding, so be it. I know that. There are some which says that within 24, see, one of the things we do very clearly in our investment is that one criteria is that within 18 to 24 months, the company must be break even or profitable. I mean, that's the. Many people argue with us that, you know, that excess thrust on uh, profitability may be taking away from market share. We argue that, you know, in the end, money is the most important, revenue is the most important criteria. Market, uh, market share will come. Uh, if you are successful, market share will uh, automatically come. Uh, can I just, uh, so, uh, again, before uh, we end, I want to again uh, just emphasize that I think some of the points that you didn't, which I think is having been in partnerships all my life, 
this business about counseling you know, through the incubation uh, an hr function is a very very important please if you want the teams to sustain through the incubation and later to keep the team intact is i think a very important thing because most of us fund teams not necessarily the idea yeah idea is there but it is the team that gets funded so okay, okay idea nahi chalega to there the team is good enough to come up with another idea but their being together over time is extremely important so please I, don't uh, uh, thank you very much prabin bhai for for illustrate uh, for emphasizing this point again again i don't remember whether i shared this experience or not but in our early days of mentoring when a team uh, a, a company had got funding from uh, sidbi i think and there was a breakup between the two partners they were trying to do marketing in the us but the breakup was so strong that both of them were pursuing their independent things and sidbi was terribly worried as to what would happen to their investment so i had actually gone to us and without telling them that i am sort of trying to do a consultation i called both of them at the same time in my hotel room and they were very surprised to see each other they were not willing to even talk to each other i made them talk to each other unfortunately they had gone beyond the break point all that i could resurrect was the breakup was proper and legal so that there were less hassles for the company which stays back but i realized that had i spent more time with them had i anticipated that there are some problems as a teacher i could have mentored them perhaps earlier avoiding this so retaining the team is very important and about ideas as he said this is something which many of us don't understand when a technology startup happens with some idea all of us appear to insist in our mind that it is the same idea which must be taken to the market more than 50% of the time that will not happen because the idea might be good the market would have changed so this is the kamal's mantra which i have learned and i always remember do not fall in love with your own idea unless the market falls in love with your idea the idea is useless however great it may be so you should be willing to change not only slightly modify your idea but willing to change completely and if you have to change completely what matters then is the team which has understood how to build a business which has understood what a customer is which has understood what a cash flow is and which has understood how to get the new team new technology and go ahead because the idea is to build a successful business okay while well, technology is important it is only it's correct so i think on 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 that note we'll conclude thank you pravin bhai thank you professor ramanath thank you dr anita gupta and and thank you sunita